Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Thank you for tuning in to the Dean Show. And this week, we want to help all of those people that are suffering, suffering and have some sadness in the heart. There's a, there's a void that needs to be filled. And you know what? You're doing your best. You're striving. You're striving to submit to the one God. You're striving to do good deeds. You're striving to develop yourself, to have noble character. But you might have lost a loved one. You might have separated in a marriage. You might just be having a bad month or a bad week and you're just sad. So how do we as Muslims, those who have submitted to the one God, how do we deal with that? Even if you're a not yet Muslim and you're going through depression, this is a topic for you too. And we're going to be covering this with our next guest, Yasser Fazaga. Sit tight, we'll be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. 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 Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you, Shaykh? I'm doing good, alhamdulillah. How are you, Eddie? Good, alhamdulillah. All thanks to the creator of the heavens and the earth who's given us this ability to be here. I'm very thankful. Time is short. So let's get right into the topic. I opened it. And you are the director of the Mental Health Institute. So you deal a lot with people coming in and having a bad day, having a bad month, having a bad year, and they're depressed. Mm -hmm. Is this right? That is very right. And again, I really have to thank you, Eddie, for bringing up these topics. These are real issues that people have to go through every single day. And actually, the Quran makes it very clear that by the mere fact that we are humans, we are going to face challenges in our lives. We don't get to choose the timing of the challenge. We don't get to choose the nature of the challenge or where it may happen. But the fact remains, and that is, we will face some challenge in our lives. That challenge may be us, our wealth, our health. It may be our loved ones, those who are around us. And again, with these challenges, it's not just the loss, but also it is the impact that the loss may have upon us. And like you said, you know, Depression just happens to be one of these challenges that may face us as humans. Now, keep in mind that um, depression is not necessarily a character weakness. Mm -hmm. People would deem depression to be, um, oh, come on, just trying you know, to shake people out of it. Um, you know, and they would give you that pep talk. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah. Or oh, hard times don't last, but tough people do. Well, these are beautiful words but they really do not eliminate depression. So depression is not seen as a personal weakness of the individual. So please, if you know anybody that is depressed out there, make sure that you do not attribute depression to their weakness, because it's not. Depression also is not the result of weak faith. And that is something that we hear amongst religious groups, and that is, oh, the person's faith in God is not that strong. That is why they are depressed. And that is not real. What it really is, is that at this point, the pain that you are going through is so overwhelming and you do not have enough tools to deal with the pain. So you go into depression. That's basically, in simple words, that is really what it means. So I appreciate that you're bringing up this topic, but it's also very important that we know how to characterize it the right way mm -hmm. so that we become a source of empowerment to those who are around us rather than a source of depression to those who are already um, depressed. So I really appreciate you bringing up this, um, this topic. Not only that, but also this idea that religious people are not necessarily um, what we call uh, inherently protected from becoming depressed simply because they are religious. Reality is um, depression is something that, you know, it, 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 it crosses all uh, bounds and all, you know, socioeconomic, um, ethnic, um, religious, uh, none of that matters. We're all prone to it. Now, what Islam promises is this. Islam does not say that because you are a Muslim, you will never be depressed. Islam says that because you are a Muslim, 
you have access to the tools that Islam gives you. If you're depressed, it will prevent you from going into despair. So religion prevents despair. It does not prevent, inherently, it does not prevent depression. That's a key right there. So being depressed is a part of the natural just consequence of being a human being? And not only that, but if we are not depressed, there is really something wrong. I mean, chances are we will be depressed someday. It will be a minor depression. It may be major depression, but definitely we will have the blues. You know, where we'll have one day we're just not feeling well. We're down. So that is, that is human. And we embrace this. We don't try to rush ourselves out, out of it. But remember, it's not depression that bothers us. It is the consequences of depression. How people choose to cope with depression. What people and who people become as a result of depression. That is really the challenge. Now, you also said after depression, the, this way of life, it will keep you from f going into despair. Right. Because what happens when you go into despair then? Uh, that's when people go into suicide. Uh -huh. That is, people won't uh, go on to, it's not worth living anymore. That is when people literally give up, and they give up on life. That is dangerous. So that is where we come in with the tools that Islam says that we have so that it prevents that. I mean, I'll just give you, give you an example. Eddie, did you know that every 15 minutes in the U.S., somebody takes away their own life? Every 15 minutes? Every 15 minutes. That is 90 people a day. That is 34,000 people every year. They die because of suicide. Falling in despair now. Yes. Not only that, Eddie, but it is the third leading cause for people between the ages of, eight, between the ages of 18 and 45. And it's the second leading cause of death for college students. We're talking about a serious, serious problem here. It's not just the depression that is serious. It is the consequences, how people cope and how people deal with depression that is problematic. Mm -hmm. People who go into alcohol thinking that this is going to make them, you know, forget about their problems. That is something that started with depression, but now the coping mechanism, the coping skills that the person has acquired are so poor that depression is no longer the problem. It is the way that they're dealing with depression. People who go into... Um, uh, smoking, especially nowadays, the smoking pot is so unbelievably popular because that is the only way that a person has learned how to cope with their depression. And that is really sad. So what we're after here is to be depressed is human. To go into despair is unacceptable. So it is helping the individuals who are going through these tough times, you know, deal with the depression, getting out of it. But at the same time, we don't want them to go into despair as well. Usually, like when you get hurt, okay, you, you, you get a Band-Aid on the scar, it takes a few days, maybe a week, you broke a bone, it takes a little bit longer, but the emotional scar sometimes can take even longer than the physical scars. But is there, you being an expert in this area, is there approximately about a time if you, you know, in a way, these tools you mentioned, that if you deal with it, it maybe take a month, six months, how long does it or is there even such a thing that approximately you'll feel this, this depression, emptiness, and before it goes away? Yeah. Well, a person is considered to be clinically depressed if they have had uh, six of nine symptoms. And just very quickly, feeling fatigue, a sense of hopelessness, uh, losing interest, uh, seeking isolation, thinking about uh, death, a person not finding pleasure in pleasurable things that they have done in the past, a person feeling down most of the day, very little tolerance for irritants, uh, the whole idea of uh, feeling down. Um, so if you have had this for two weeks, then you are considered to be clinically depressed. Now, this is not considering that a major life-changing event has taken place. People getting divorced, a loved one dying, then we would expect that naturally it would take us some time to heal. But if you are depressed, and you have been there for a while, then two weeks would be, you know, anything less than two weeks would be normal. More than two weeks, it would be clinically, you are defined as clinically depressed. Let's take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Do not kill a woman. Do not kill a child. Do not kill You know, going to different religious leaders, Buddhism, Hinduism, uh, forms of Christianity, 
I even ran into people from the Nation of Islam. Kill an old man. Do not kill an animal. Do not cut a tree down. Do not pollute their water. Do not burn their homes. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Yasser Fazaga, we're talking about depression, and we want people to understand. Okay, this is normal, but when you fall into what are you talking about now? Desperation, or what was the other word? The poor coping mechanism to despair or poor despair. Coping. Okay, when you fall into despair, that can be a problem, leading to suicide and things that are, you know taking the wrong course now. But tell us, okay, so. A broken bone doctor can tell you, okay, in, in six months you'll be healed. You mentioned two weeks before we went to the break. Uh, and then you're, you're clinically diagnosed as, as uh, depressed. Right. So how is it? So from here, after you, you've been depressed for two weeks, I mean, w talk to us more. Is there like after two months that it gets, you're labeled something else or should it go away after two months? But do you have to be doing something? These tools you mentioned, what are the tools and uh, do you have to implement them? How do you implement them? Or otherwise you're depressed for two years. Yeah. See, think about depression like falling into a hole, Eddie. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is for the viewers as well. But that hole is not stagnant. The hole is either getting deeper or you're trying to crawl out of it. And the longer that we stay in that hole, the deeper it gets. But also the deeper it gets, the more difficult it gets to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And the more hopeless we become as, as a result. So usually what we want to see is that once a person recognizes this, that they're depressed, and we usually do, and then again, you know, depending on the severity of it. So we would say that a person is depressed. It's either you know, minor depression, it is, or it's mild, they would call it. It's either moderate or it is severe. And when it gets severe, we're talking a person being negligent of their personal hygiene. For example, they don't go to work anymore. Their performance is just, um, and their functionality is impacted by this. They started performing very poorly academically. In their relationship, they start neglecting their responsibility towards their loved ones. And that's when like, they can have like, suicidal thoughts, or they can actually start having psychosis, which means that you know, their perception of reality is disturbed at this, at this point. So what we are looking at is we want to make sure that the minute we notice it, then we want to make sure that we take early prevention. So the very first tool that I would you know, point our attention to is this whole idea of early prevention. If you detect it, if you sense it, do something about it. And basically, because depression is all about doing nothing, it's just people idling, and you know, there is really nothing happening, the very first thing that we want to do is actually begin by doing something. Doing something, exactly. as opposed to doing nothing. Exactly. And, and the point is that this helps people in really getting out of it, remaining to be functional despite the fact that they are depressed. Now, you know, there is this thing about being an alcoholic and a functioning alcoholic. You can be depressed and functionally you're also, you know, you're, you're okay. Uh, it's a lesser form of depression at that, at that point. We also want to make sure that you surround yourself with a good support system. That is when family members come in. That is when friends come in. You know, you're talking about uh, people who have committed suicide, okay? They say that about 80% of the people before they, you know, before they completed their suicide, they called their loved one. They called their loved one, okay? There was this story about um, this young man uh, he was determined in San Francisco that he was going to go to the Golden Gate Bridge and that he was going to throw himself down unless somebody asks about him. So he said that he actually made it to the Golden Gate Bridge and he said that a couple came and they handed uh, him a camera and asked if he can take their photo. He wow. said, I took their photo, but they did not ask how I was doing. Mm. So he threw himself down but he did not die, and that's how we know the story. So the idea is that even when people are depressed and they get into that stage of despair and they no longer want to live, they usually reach out to somebody before, before they do that. So if you are a parent and your teenage son or daughter, they've been talking to you about depression, please take that seriously. If you are a friend and somebody has reached out to you saying that I really don't want to live anymore, 
please take that seriously. I mean, there is a course that we teach on just noticing signs and symptoms of a person considering suicide. People giving their valuables away. People have this cat that they really adore. And they call you up and say, no, I want you to take care of my cat. Oh, for the weekend? Uh, no, no, I want, take, I want you to take care of it. You mean, are you leaving town? No, I just want you to have it. Mm -hmm. Immediately, you know, what is, what is going on? When people start giving you know, away things that they really value, it means that they're clearing the way to do that. So this support system, you know, and don't be afraid of asking people, you know what, you're very depressed. You know, I'm really afraid for you. And do not be afraid of using the word suicide. Are you considering suicide? Don't shy away from using, uh, from using the word. You're normalizing it at that, at that point. So it will, be, it will be these things, you know, the support systems. And then there's just the proper tools. Having access to a professional is definitely a tool that we want you to uh, employ. And remember, because you're seeing a therapist or you're seeing a psychiatrist, it does not mean that it, you are weak because you are unable to do it on your, on your own. It does not mean that you're crazy. It does not mean that you are um, insane. And I know that you know, therapists don't really fare well in uh, society nowadays, especially if you're a psychiatrist. People are talking about you visiting a shrink. And so, so there is that stigma that, that, um, that, comes, um, that comes with it. But just get to know as many tools as, as possible. And, you know, we've mentioned three of them here um, so far. So don't be alone. Talk to someone. Get a, attention for this matter right away. Yes. An early, early detection, early prevention is usually the way to go with it. Talk to us about some other things that a person can do, you know, to get more optimistic on the optimistic side and to get away from you know, falling into despair, they lost, let's say they just got divorced, or, you know, the person lost their children, you know, some things, other things that you recommend that they do. Yeah. One great tool that we really like to do is something that we call uh, relabeling. And basically what that is, is that you're not necessarily changing the facts of what happened, but just give it a different label, and that may actually make you feel better. So we can refer to somebody as either a rape victim or a rape survivor. We're not changing the facts. You know, something bad has really happened to this person. Something terrible has happened to this person. But when I call them a victim, it's a downer. Yet when I use the word survivor, there's actually hope there. You're empowering the, the, um, the individual. So rather than saying that I am weak, for example, let's say when you're depressed, you know, I'm going through some difficult times at this point. And what that would do is that just the, the, the negative labeling of the self is removed away, and that actually helps us in keeping our own sense of goodness. Our self-concept, our sense of self, has not been distorted as a result of this negative label that we have applied to, our, um, to ourselves. Reaching out to friends, usually it's just the support system that is around us. You know, making sure that you are in good company, that would be such a great tool, asset. I mean, good friends, good friends are a beautiful asset, you know. And, and, and that's why, you know, say that that's the best, you know, the most beautiful things in life are not things. It is relationships. And what better and more beautiful than a relationship that you can actually count on when you are so down than our friends. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lie's by my side I am not afraid to stand alone Hay solo un Dios Adóralo a él solo yeah, he, no a su creación. I would go to my room, lock the door, prostrate and cry, saying, God, you know me better than myself. Show me the right way, and I will not look back. I will leave everything behind. Allah is our creator, and he creates everything, and he gives intelligence to people. Rasulullah is Muhammad's peace be upon him. Muhammad is one of the last messengers sent from God. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Yasser Fazaga. 
Now, in this way of life that we follow, the way of life of all the messengers of God, we're trying to live a righteous life according to God's wills, not our desires. Sometimes a person can get more depressed feeling that, you know what, is this a punishment from God? Am I did I do something to displease God? Can a person sins also, you know, going away from, let's say, uh, the prayer, you know, establishing a relationship with the Creator. Can this also lead to depression? Or even on the flip side, if someone's doing these things, but then they fall into depression, they feel like, you know what, is God turned His back on me? And they get more depressed. Yep. Yep. You know, here's what we say. Having the correct perception of who God is and knowing Him through His names and attributes and the beautiful qualities that He has told us about is just a cardinal, cardinal uh, component of having a healthy life. The other thing that you also want to keep in mind is if, if the higher the gap between where we actually are and our values and principles, meaning that if our values and principles are up here and our actions are down here, this is too high of a gap. Mm -hmm. That is an invitation to misery. We are actually happiest when there is harmony between what we believe, what our principles are, what our values are, and then our actions are actually a testimony to what we believe in, what we value, and what our principles are. So what we want to do is close this gap as much as possible, and that is harmony. That is when we acquire that peace of mind. You know, the saying that if what you believe in does not impact how you behave, then what you believe in is not important. So how can you say that God is merciful, yet you have this um, perception of Him? Saying that God opens the doors, and He is the dispenser of grace, yet you say that. So that will be an erroneous, um, an erroneous um, perception of God, because God does not benefit anything from putting us through miseries. That will not be uh, acceptable. Does prayer, does um, getting close to God help? It definitely does. And that is why many times, actually, a therapist would refer clients for some spiritual healing. You know, they would say, fine, I want you to take your medication, take your antidepressants or anti-anxiety pills. I want you to come to counseling so that we make sense out of it. But you know what? I think spiritual healing will also be helpful to you. So you see a lot of people being sent to their rabbi, to their pastor, to the imams. And the point is, is spirituality can actually add meaning and give explanation to what the person is going through, as well as the idea of instilling hope because of their belief in God. That can also be a very important component of you know, gaining back our emotional health. Now, before we close, just a few more points that I, I want to cover. Now, there's a person who is, who's living more of a life according to this way of life, according to the game plan. Will that person be less inclined towards depression? Look, um, here is the thing. Um, what, that's really about what causes depression. Yeah. So it could be the genetics. Mm -hmm. It could be biological factors. It could be environmental. It could be just the or the person's own susceptibility to fall into depression. So you may really be praying and what have you, but then you lose a child. Mm -hmm. So naturally you would be you That's would just be natural depressed. now, you exactly. feel that. You shouldn't feel guilty about you that. You get divorced. Yeah. So naturally you would feel that mm -hmm. because you are religious, like we said. Religion does not inherently prevent depression. Religion gives you enough tools to prevent you from going into despair. The tools, so you can do the job when the depression kicks in, you got the tools to help you get out of the depression. Exactly, exactly. But if you don't have the tools, and the tools, would you say the knowledge? Well, the, the tools would be, you know, uh, what we call about, you know, just the whole idea of being aware that the idea of optimism, because ah. optimism, believe it or not, is actually a learned behavior. Gotcha. Okay. We're not born optimistic. It's a mm -hmm. learned behavior. It's a mm -hmm. behavior that we actually learn. You know, attitude and perception, all these things. These would be proper tools that we can all learn. And the thing is, Eddie, and this is really interesting. Um, each and every one of us, we have got like just enough well of treasure within us that we have not tapped into. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a good therapist, what that therapist would do, they won't really give you new tools, but they would tap into your own well of tools mm -hmm. that you actually have, but you were not aware of. Now, last closing comments and suggestions for the persons is at the edge. They're at the edge, you know what, and they might even be contemplating suicide and they just tune into the Dean Show and they're listening to you. What advice do you have for them? You know, hey, look, 
it, you know, this idea of, of you being depressed, that is not a personal weakness. It's not a lack of faith. It is just what it is. So, you know, the, the pain is overwhelming at this point, And what you need is tools to help you, you know, get out of the pain. Please reach out to your friends. Call a hotline. You know, talk to your family doctor. Talk to your um, family, um, family members. Just do it for your own self as well. And you know what? If we can last this day, we never know the goodness that tomorrow is going to bring to us. And that's the whole idea of just, you know, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, and, and, and the sad reality is, you know, uh, a bend in the road is not necessarily the end of the road. So it may just be that turn that you need, and then you'll see the light at the end of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Thank again, you. we started with peace. We end with peace. Thank you so much. May God Almighty, the Creator, reward you for being with us. Here. I mean, thank you. And thank you for sitting tight to another episode of Dean's Some great advice. Some great advice from the experts. And that's why you come here to learn, to learn. Every week we're here trying to bring you another episode. And if you want to learn more about the most misunderstood way of life, yet the fastest growing way of life. And this way of life will bring nothing but joy and peace into one's life. But you've got to have the tools. And one of the first tools to start with and you can get it for free is by calling the 1-800-662-ISLAM number. That's the verbatim word of God. That's right. It's the Quran. So if you'd like to get your copy, give us a call today. And for any questions that you might have, even criticisms are welcome. We can start a healthy dialogue. That's right. And we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you. And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your creator. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone.